When you're looking to delve deeper into the hobby of sim racing, there will come a point when sitting in your office chair with your G29 bolted to your desk just won't cut it anymore. And if you're getting serious about sim racing, the PlayStation Trophy Logitech Edition is the perfect demonstration of that. It's a serious cockpit with some serious strength and comfortability. It's relatively easy to build too, and I was able to piece it all together in about an hour. Despite some small QC issues, such as paint filling this pretty vital screw hole and this thingy-majig that holds the wheelbase plate just being loose in the box, I was pretty surprised at how premium this thing felt. It's properly solid and it doesn't feel like a toy in the slightest. And weighing in at 17 kilograms or 37 pounds, it's refreshingly light too. Now it's time for the sit test. And yes, it doesn't look comfortable at all. And that's because it wasn't but that's by design. You see, one of the greatest features of the PlayStation Trophy is its adjustability, and there's almost infinite levels of it. From the pedal plate, which not only has slots, enabling you to scoot it around to any desired position, but there's also a plethora of bolt holes, allowing you to get the perfect fit. These are complete with four easily adjustable bolts, which you don't need any tools to change. You can also extend the cockpit entirely with two telescopic tubes finished with, I think, laser printed markings, allowing you to make sure both sides are matching exactly. Furthermore, the angle of the wheelbase plate is also adjustable, as well as the seat. Although these little things here are a massive issue, but we'll get onto that in a moment. With such an emphasis on adjustability of the pedals, with these bright blue knobs that are begging to be twisted, it's a mystery to me as to why I need to use an Allen key four times just to adjust the angle of the wheelbase, or the length of the entire thing. I would have loved to have seen these things be just as easily adjustable. And for me personally, the pedals are probably the thing that I adjust least. They're just something you set and forget. Additionally, if I want to change the angle of the backrest, I need to use two Allen keys twice. Also, if it's not obvious, there's no height adjustability of the wheelbase, but I didn't find that to be an issue at all. Moving on to the seat now, and this is where I find fault with those goddamn things. You might turn your nose up at a Velcro chair, but I think these things are the perfect solution. When you first sit in it, as you've seen, it is uncomfortable, but due to the Velcro being almost infinitely adjustable, you can go down one by one, resetting every piece of Velcro until the seat is practically molded to your body. After some fine tuning, you've got a chair that is extremely comfortable. I'm six foot two and my shoulders are pretty broad, yet I somehow still manage to fit into the chair snugly, and it feels like an actual bucket seat. However, most of my height is in my legs, and even with the chair extended to large, my feet still might be just a touch too close to the pedals. And if I raise my knee, it does clatter against the underside of the wheelbase plate, which can get frustrating. The crown of my head also leans against the uppermost metal bar on the seat, but this has been an issue in every single cockpit I've used to date. And on the PlayStation Trophy, this metal bar is wrapped in foam, which does make it slightly more comfortable. The seat itself is also made with ActiFit fabric, that lets the air flow through the material. But now for that massive issue I mentioned. When getting in and out of the chair, you're going to want to put your hands on the highest point for stability. But it just so happens that the highest point is those seat adjustment struts. Now, putting all of your weight on these will cause them to bend, like one of mine did. So just bear that in mind if you're going to purchase this chair, your name has to be Peter Parker, or else it's not going to end well. Anyway, the PlayStation Trophy has plenty of holes for mounting any major manufacturer of wheels and pedals. However, if you do own more obscure wheels, there is a possibility you'll need to do some DIY. I know for something like the Thrustmaster T818 or my Camus, you may need to drill a few extra holes, but you're going to have to do this on pretty much any cockpit if you own these wheels. Once everything was set up, however, there was absolutely zero flex in the chassis. My wheelbase is 15 Nm, and this is the first cockpit that has enabled me to feel all of that gorgeous torque. Any flex in the chassis will disperse some of the force feedback, and this is one of the major selling points. I'm quite certain this thing could handle literally any wheelbase for the foreseeable future, and when I was using it, it was so sturdy that I practically just forgot it was there. However, one thing I didn't forget about was my shifter and handbrake. If you're wondering where they will go, 
Spacey will try to upsell you on their gear shift and handbrake holder. For an extra £40, this thing just bolts onto the side, and when you're spending £500 on a premium cockpit, I would expect this to be included, as it should be seen as a necessity. So who is the Placey Trophy Logitech Edition for? If you're more of a casual racer on a non-direct drive wheel, the Placey Trophy is likely overkill, and this inability to fold up means it's likely not a good buy for those short on space. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Placey Trophy, and if you're looking to get into direct drive wheelbases, this thing should be the bare minimum. It'll be able to handle anything you throw at it, and it should last a very long time too with its superb build quality. It's comfortable, adjustable, and most importantly, it just works, with minimal tinkering and fussing needed. If you do want to buy this cockpit and support the channel, there's an affiliate link at the top of the description, which I get a small kickback from. Thanks.